Centripetal force. You all have felt a centripetal force. Anytime you've been on a bus or in your car and you've taken a, a, a tight turn, especially at a high speed, you know, you've had to grab the railing so, so you didn't slide into the wall or into the side of your car, right? Well, that's a very um, natural feel. We can all relate to what a centripetal centripetal force is, um, but what is it really? Well, it's the force that is <clears throat> pushing you to the center, and that force causes you to move in a circular path. Because remember, a velocity is a direction and a speed, a speed at a direction, and if you're going around a circular path, your velocity is always going to be tangent to the center of that circle. So your velocity is always changing, okay? Well, the force that allows for that change in velocity is a centripetal force, okay? And that force is the acceleration of that force we can describe as the velocity squared divided by the radius r. So the radius is going to be, again, this distance right here, okay? So that's the acceleration due to a centripetal force which allows that change in velocity, okay? Uh, the force itself, remember, a force is mass times acceleration. So now we need to multiply the mass of the object times the velocity squared and divide by the radius. And that'll tell us what that centripetal force is that is allowing that object to change direction as it continues to revolve around the center of the circle, okay? Let's look at an example of how you could calculate centripetal force, okay? So I've got a two kilogram object and it's swinging from a 0.5 meter string, okay? And it's moving at three meters per second, okay? What's the centripetal force on that object, okay? So again, this is a force, so it's the acceleration, um, velocity squared over the radius, times the mass, okay? Well, let's plug those numbers in, okay? So our mass is two kilograms, two kilograms, okay? Our velocity is three, meters per second squared, okay? This is tricky, meters per second squared. That really is going to equal nine meters per second, meters squared over seconds squared, okay? So don't be confused when you have a derived unit and you've got a square. You've got to square both of those units, okay? Uh, and the radius here we said was point zero point five meters, okay? Well, let's go ahead and just crunch these numbers, okay? So nine meters per second squared times two is 18, okay? And let's keep our units there, 18 kilograms, okay? Times meters squared over seconds squared, okay? Over 0.5 meters. Okay, another thing students oftentimes get tripped up is, you know, I've got this unit up here and this unit up here and I've got a unit down here. How do I solve for that, right? Well, remember, this unit can actually come down here, okay? And then our meters, meters squared, will just become meters and we can cancel that meter. And we're going to get 36, I'm sorry, I'll keep my units before I jump to Newtons, 36 times kilograms times meters over seconds squared, okay? And remember, kilograms over times meters seconds squared is an easy way to simplify that into 36 newtons. Ah, we're back at the newton, which is a unit of force, okay? So this is how we can calculate a centripetal force on an object as it's moving in a circular orbit.